So a common design theme that I think is going to be sticking around for a long time and has been adopted in spatial computing, VR, XR, throw this into whatever application you want, is having nice beveled corners around screens. So I'm going to show you today how to create a maskable object with a little 3D window. The URP will be in the description as well for the shader to get a nice Kawas blur effect here that we allows us to see exactly what we're what we're about to look at really because the screen otherwise wouldn't be there. So we just played and paused and we're also going to press stop. Okay, I'm just going to show you the script for that as well, but I'm not going to show you how to create the UI. You can hook this up in a traditional 2D system as well. The tutorial will work for a normal 2D system. So if you want to see off the bat how the shader looks like to get this nice blur effect, you can just pause and copy this here just now. So to make a start on this, I have just put in my 3D screen here, which you can download in the description, along with the mask, PNG graphic, and the script. The script is just a video controller that allows you to select the path of a video file to play. And if you're going to compile this project, then I've just named it as a video.mp4 file. It's going to play when the, pro when the video is... Um, it's going to pause the video if it's playing and play when it's paused, and then stop the playback as well. I've hooked these up to these two buttons here, so you'll be able to access this into whatever project you want to use it for. It's just using the public void accessors there. So this is my 3D screen. The first thing we're really gonna create is actually a canvas. And we're gonna call this just screen canvas. What we're gonna do with this canvas is set it to world space so then we can disable these two and then what we can do under here is assign an image which we're going to be using as the mask and as I said this will be in the description so let's just take a look for the mask video mask wonderful and all this is is a beveled uh, PNG graphic so it's enabled as maskable and we have the mask property here and once that's done that's the mask created but it's in the wrong location so we're going to go to the 3D screen this is why I recommend creating that at the start and just click Control shift F and we can see the mask is going to move into much clearer proximity to it. I'm just going to set the rotation to 0, 180, 0, and then move it just as it's through the thing. Closer we get, the better, so we don't have this weird parallax effect. And then I'm going to move it down and scale this up. And you could probably do this algorithmically, but I will show you later on that if you want to create a render texture that isn't... To, to, if you want to create a render texture that matches the video resolution, you're going to have to instantiate one because you can't change it at runtime, okay? So that looks pretty good. I know there's a little border there, so really we want to make it a little bigger. Actually, that just might be the map. So we'll leave that as it is. So we have our mask created here, and that was just a normal image. So the next image we're going to create is actually a raw image, and we're just going to create that as a child of the mask. Where is it? There we are. And this is going to be the video texture file, okay? The This is where we'll sign a render texture. So I'm going to delete the one that I made earlier. And we're going to right-click, create, and look for render texture. I never seem to find that one. Video. I'm going to call it video texture. Hopefully that's not being used. And you can see the size up here. I'm just going to set it to 1920 by 1080p as the video I have to use just now is a 16 by 9 aspect ratio, but you can work with this in code and get a nice video player set up pretty quickly if you want to spend the time. I'm going to drag and drop the video texture onto here, and you can see now that because we have the mask enabled, that the as soon as we assign a video uh, a file to this texture, that then the mask is going to start working straight away. So let's go and create a video player here. And this is going to be our main video player. The video clip is going to come from a URL and the source is going to be from our video URL that we have in our script, unless it's defined um, just by the root folder there. But that's obviously commented out for your own use. So the target texture is going to be that render texture we just created. And now the video player is going to play the file that we select in here to this video texture. Be sure to remove file slash slash. It's not really needed here. And let's drag and drop that script we created. As we're using a public reference, we'll do that. And then also the screen canvas here we have there. I and mean, as I said, if, it's, if you want to make a reference to the URL here, you can do that. And that's really it. So as you can see now, if we disable this mask, it's just going to show you 
the um, the outline here and the video texture is enabled with a maskable object. So let's go up to video player. We're playing to our video texture, the video file. We want to disable our play on awake and we want to check that that is linked up. Looks good. And now we have our screen canvas, which is a world space. We have our mask, which is our video mask. And then we're masking a raw image here, which is maskable via the video texture. So I need to make sure that my video player uh, is hooked up to my 3D toolbar here. So I'm going to go into my inner button and just a video controller stop playback is assigned to the correct one here. So video controller, this is video controller and then we're going to do stop playback and I'm going to update this one as well. So it's referencing not the old video player I made and this one's going to have the toggle pause Okay, and with that, we should have a video rendering on screen. So I'm going to put the headset on just now. And one thing that I do need to do is, because we're enabling it when it starts, we're actually just going to go onto um, our screen canvas, which we referenced under here, and just disable it, because we're going to enable it by default as soon as we press play. So as you can see here, we have our buttons with the screen. And if I click play, it's going to play the video with the nice beveled corners. If I click play again, it's going to stop. And then there we go. So the only thing really to do is if you want to add in the Kawas blur, I have the material here and I'm just going to drag and drop that on there. And straight away, you'll be able to see that if I drag, there you go. So it's quite cool. Obviously, this is uh, completely manipulatable into whatever you want, but it looks so much cleaner if you want to have a consistent design theme with beveled, beveled corners. And it's something that I, I really enjoy uh, being immersed in. So I hope this video helped you with masking and gives you some inspiration for some spatial UI design concepts. The link in the description will give you a link to my paper about um, accessible interface design for 3D uh, virtual environments. I'm literally doing this video because I'm trying to get out as much content before my PhD thesis is submitted. And the next video that's coming out is about tremor reduction in VR. And I look forward to um, giving you a little demo of that. So thanks a lot for watching. I hope, hope you succeed with this tutorial.